you will not find a more vicious fish than this right here, the northern snakehead. And honestly, I feel like this is one of the most beautiful freshwater fish. Look at the pattern. Looks just like a boa constrictor. Look at this place. Bro, dude, what is going th on this here? parking lot is packed and people just are just loading in right now. <laughs> we are fishing somewhere very famous today. I'll go over it, it's called Matta Woman Creek. We're going for a world record today. Yellow. Yeah, yeah, you'd be yellow, right? Yeah. Sunrise? At this point, yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Dude. Yeah, that looks straight up red. That's the effect of those uh, Canadian wildfires. It was crazy, huh? Crazy, man. Hope they're all right, man. Yeah. Hope oh, my lungs are okay after this, too. <laughs> <laughs> it, smells crisp, it smells crispy out here. Yeah. Like you said, it smells like Canadian bacon. <laughs> 6.30 30 a.m. Here we are. A lot of action going on out here. As I mentioned, this is Matta Woman Creek on the Potomac River. We're doing an experiment today. We're gonna see what kind of impact the Northern Snakehead has had on this fishery, which... So for those of you guys who don't know, the first ever snakehead was found in Maryland in a pond in Crofton called, well, renamed Walking Fish Pond. That's actually pretty close to me. It's only about 30 minutes from where I live. And since then, I mean, it's been 21 years. The snakeheads are pretty much everywhere. I mean, I've caught them. I've caught them five minutes from my house in my local creek, Patapsco River. They are just insanely good at spreading around. Apparently, they can even walk a little bit on land if their conditions are right. So what we're doing today is we're going to see how much of an impact the snakehead population has had on the bass. Matta Woman Creek actually has the world record northern snakehead, which was caught pretty recently. So in theory, you could say we have a chance to catch a world record today. Oh, oh bro, let's go, oh. dude. Was that your first cast? Yeah. Oh, I'm filming the intro. It's a large mouth. Okay. Well, on is that the Hummer? Data point. Yep. The Google Squad Hummer, baby. Take a page out of your book, bro. Yeah. So we're going to be seeing how many bass versus how many snakeheads we catch today. And it's our, like that's fish number one on this little mouth. Would you just cast to the edge of the grass? Is that what you're doing? Pretty much at the mouth of this little okay. pocket right here. Gotcha. Thank you, fishy. Let's go, dude. Wait, was that your first cast or second cast? Second cast. Oh, good, good. Not the first second cast. Second cast, Woo! -hoo -hoo! I, I like that. I know what you're talking <laughs> hey. about there, too. <laughs> now, according to Zarlite, you believe that the bow hunters have been keeping the snakehead population in check. Is that correct? Yes, they have seemed to be the natural predator, it seems. Gotcha. The boat ramp is full of them. <laughs> the boat ramp is full of bow hunters. That is true. And in the wild, I don't think the snakeheads have too many natural predators. They are an invasive species, highly prolific. And I've heard in boat fishing tournaments, they're taking thousands, over a thousand pounds of snakeheads in some tournaments. Have you heard that before, bro? Wow, I didn't hear about that. You didn't heard about that? Okay. According to a couple articles I've read, they're pulling out over 1,000. Oh my gosh, bro, I saw that blow up. I saw that. Bro, what? This is how large you want this going on here. You're Both kidding me. Juicy. Wait a second. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Get him in the boat, bro. Oh, oh. let's go, boat flip. Bro, you're a beast. <laughs> All right, hey, two? That's two points to large mouth. There's a snakehead. I don't know, bro. Maybe, maybe snakeheads aren't a big deal out here. <laughs> it looks pretty freaking juicy. I love these green oh, fish. Oh man, two, almost two and a half pounder right here. Beautiful. Maybe even that one could say two and a half pounds on this guy. Yeah. Let's go, dude. Yeah, bro. <laughs> no, hey, this might be the best you. start you've ever had. Hey man, early morning. Whoa. Sunrise. Bro, okay. I, I know that fish must smell good, but this air does not smell. That smells a little funky. I'm going to use these bass as a filter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Bro, I'm going to watch you make another cast. Cause let's see if you get three in a row. Dude, right. how, what are the, uh, I've never seen a fisherman catch three in a row right when we get on the lake. Let's go ahead and see. There's the action of the Hummer. If you guys want to pick one up, googlesquad.com, promo code one rod. Let's see. Okay, okay. That would have been a little too crazy to pull off the hat trick, bro. But hey, that's good stuff. All right. Zarlife got me hyped. We need to get rigged up. We need to get out here. We got a beautiful grass line, tons of activity. Let's go catch a world record. Starting things off, guys, I am gonna fish with the brand new Guggen Squad Wake Banger. This is a wake crankbait. Only goes about an inch or so under the water when you cast it. You can reel it super slow. You can crawl it, essentially. It has a ton of noise and vibration. 
I mean, instead of just telling you guys, let me go ahead and show you. I'm in the water finally. Drag it set. Show you guys the power of the wake banger. So there it is, floating top of the water. Look at that, you hear that? So it goes just under the surface, almost a top water bait. Ton of wiggling action. The water, clear, the water is definitely stained, so I'm hoping this draws uh, some good strikes right here. Oh, the smuckers? Yeah. I oh, got those two, bro. You got loaded us up. Oh, I got one, bro. Yes. This is my first fish ever <laughs> on the wake net banger. Net? Uh, it's decent. It's decent. Okay, Let's net it. Let's net it. I just want to make sure I catch the first one ever on this bait. Woo, it's decent. I think it's a largie, too. I, yes, it's got to be a largie. Dude, these fish are strong. Is the tide incoming, incoming or outgoing right now? Uh, this one is incoming. Incoming tide. All right. Oh, oh, dude, it's a good fish. Dude, it's a good fish. I don't know. If, is that largey or? Is that, that's large. It's a huge largey. Bro, huge. Wait, 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 hold on. Oh, right, get him. Get him. Let's go. <laughs> what the heck, dude? Look at that, oh, man. my gosh. Yo. What the? First Yo. ever fish on the wake. Whoa, whoa. Ooh, ooh, watch out. Watch out. Dude, it's huge. Oh, let's go, boys. <laughs> we will take that, my friend. Dude, Jeez. spawned out. Yeah. Spawned out fish. Yeah. Just took a photo. Let's give this fish a quick dip. Time to get a weight on her. All right, girl. Gotta take good care of these fish in that warm water. You know what I'm saying, bro? Mm hmm. That warm water, they run out of oxygen quickly. Pull up the scale. There it is. All right. Dip. Good. Fish nice and healthy. All right, let's get a weight on her. She spawned out. This is a historic moment, my friends. First fish I've ever caught on the wake banger. Scale turning out, here we go. Is she gonna reach three pounds? Probably not, but probably oh, close. Close, mm. gotta be close. What are we at? 3.36. Really? All right. Yes. Three and a three quarter pounder. all pounded. day. Woo, she's long. Hell yeah. Imagine if she was fat, she'd be over four oh for sure. Gosh. Fish number one. Wake banger, boys. Throw that early morning. Pop him. Let it go. See ya. Woo! Woo! Stop, Let's go, bro. dude. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Appreciate that. This might be the best morning start I've ever had. <laughs> For at least this year. Wake banger, the Hummer. Dude, we, I mean, I don't even know. We're just getting started here. Who yeah, knows what's going to happen man. today? And dude, look at the activity. Are those minnows? Is, like, I'm stuff? thinking, yeah. Look over there. Is that, what's spawning over there? I just see like, a lot of bait fish. Yeah. Sometimes they're panicking because of all the good fish underneath. Dang, Maybe. dude. I see a ton everywhere. Yeah. This could get real juicy in a second. All right. Just spent 15 minutes pushing from the mouth back into this creek. The water's flowing into it. I thought we'd get a bite, but nothing. We're not gonna waste time. We're actually gonna go back to the mouth, try to run a pattern, create a pattern for this morning, because that's how you maximize your fishing time. Yeah, I got, I'm, I got one. I'll have one on my other rod. Pretty good. Yep. There's another one, bro. Oh, what is this? A uh, little bass. Uh, that way, what is that? Is that bass or? What is this? Yes, yeah, little bass. That was a snakehead. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's bro, that's the smallest snakehead I've ever caught. Yo, we got the world record Holy bejizo. The smallest snakehead I've ever caught is probably like 15, 18 inches. This one, that's like a 12 incher, isn't it? Yeah. How good. young do you think the snakehead is? I got born this year. Really? No, 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 one sorry. year. Maybe one last year. Last year? Last year, you think? Maybe late last year. All right. You got to be very careful. They can be very vicious. So we try They're slippery, too. You want to rag? Get hooked. Yeah, good. I'm good. Woo! Woo! Making me nervous here. All right. Oh, he's biting down. They got incredible bite force. It's actually, even this little one, it's hard for me to get their mouth open. Dude, this is tricky, dude. This is one of the annoying things about snakeheads is getting them unhooked. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. take it down. Okay, okay, hey, hey, don't bite me. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Dude, it kind of can crawl on the ground a little bit. Oh, shoot, bro. <laughs> Jeez Louise. You better lose a rock. Okay, okay, good. okay, I got her, I got him. Okay. 
Okay, okay, dude. Guys, you will not find a more vicious fish than this right here, the northern snakehead. And honestly, I feel like this is one of the most beautiful freshwater fish. Look at the pattern. Looks just like a boa constrictor. Now, bro, this is an invasive species. What are you like doing with them? I mean, are we eating some or what's the deal here? Yeah, I mean, that looks a little bit small. too small for me to eat, so. Now, what do you like to do? You want to release the small ones or you want to off the small ones? This is your boat. I'm down either way. Yeah, let's let them go. Okay. Yeah, it's too early in the day. We got to knock them over the head. Then gotcha. we got like a lot of right. fishing, so. The world's smallest snakehead going in. See ya. Let's see where she goes. Let's see how she goes. They're oh. fast. They're, they're quick. All right, thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Amen. Thank so, guys, you. let's talk for a second. That is, the northern snakehead is an invasive species. And back in the day, they recommended that you kill them, I believe. Is that right, Zarlite? Yeah. In fact, they you still might to. recommend it. I, they, do they still recommend it? They recommend it, but it's like you could let them Yeah. Go. So, they still recommend that you kill them to help control the population. Mm -hmm. But you are legally allowed to release them in the same body of water yeah. that you catch them. Mm -hmm. So that little guy, we've decided to release them. You know, everyone has their own opinion. Comment below what you like to do with, with northern snakeheads. But so far, it looks like the uh, bass population is looking pretty healthy. We're still we're only about th 30 minutes into fishing here. We've still got a lot of time to see uh, how this experiment plays out. Oh, I get hit by a snakehead, bro. That was a little snakehead. Yeah. That was another baby oh, snakehead. Yeah. Baby snakehead right here. You saw them? Oh, under us, huh? Yeah. Dang, dude. That one, that one might have been even smaller. I've never seen so many small snakeheads before. All right, we're just hitting the edges of these pads here. Is I like working the Hummer? I'm working the wake banger. About to hit another mouth over here. This could, oh, there's the big activity over there too. This place is popping this morning. I am freaking hyped. It's worth the waking up at 4, 4.30 a.m. today, bro. I'll tell you what. Definitely worth it. Oh. Yeah. Oh my gosh, bro! He pounded it. He pounded it. He destroyed the wake beggar. Woo oh, good lord! Yeah, we'll net it, bro. We'll net this one. It's not huge, but I don't want to. I'm not losing any fish today. Yes. Uh, no, That's another good fish. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, okay, hook him out here. Yeah, I'll just go down here, grab the fish. Bada boom, bada bing. There we go. Yes, Woo! Thank you, my friend. Sir. We will take this all day long. Two pounder, another spawned out fish. Nothing un crazy unusual. Let it go. What do you think, bro? Four bass, one snakehead. That's what I'm saying, man. You think the bass are fine, or what are we, what, what are we, what are we thinking think. here? You I think, think they're, they're good? Okay. You think they can coexist? Here. Yeah, here. Sure. Gotcha. Yeah. I think you might be right. All right, we're going to continue. We're going to continue running the experiment. It is morning, so who knows? Maybe when we get a little later or in a different area, things might be a little different. All I know is that we got the wind pushing right into these pads right here, creating a beautiful ambush point for these predator fish. Who's going to be the more efficient predator, the bass or the snakehead? Only time will tell. Wake banger, baby. Bro, I actually, I was so excited when Guggen finally announced the wake banger. Really? Yeah, because I used to, I fish, the, the baby one minus is one of my main baits. Because, yeah. you know, we, we fish shallow grass all the time yeah, in stained right, water. Yeah. This bait is an absolute beast in stained water plus shallow grass. And that's exactly what we're fishing here. I mean, I'll show you guys under the water later when there's better light penetration. All under us is all kinds of vegetation and you can't even, you can't even run. A square bill will get caught. You got to run something just under the surface like the wake banger. Wake banger can outperform in certain, in certain scenarios and this might be, uh, this might be one of them. Oh damn, oh this is how you get through, huh? You just power through it. Alright. You got this bro, you got this. Dude, these are freaking, can you get through here? Sometimes. Sometimes. So we've come around the mouth. We're trying to get into this little, what do we call this zone in right in front of you, bro? I don't even know what you call it. Oh I yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like, like it's like a, it's enclosed by the, by the, the pads, correct? It's yeah. an enclosed area. And we got, these are spatter dock pads, correct? What I heard, yeah. All right, so we got the spatter docks. They are extremely thick. Let me just show you guys one of them that we uh, got cut off right here. Very thick and long, look at that. 
Got the head right there, pretty impressive. So that's what we're dealing with. These fish love using this as cover, ambush prey. Damn, it's only 7.30. We've only been, we've only been fishing for, oh, you got one, bro. Oh, let's go, is that sneaky? Is that your net, net, net? What is that? Oh, bass, you need a net or you flipping it? Ah, oh, you got this, bro. Whoa! <laughs> Good flip, my guy. Hey. All right, that puts us at what? Is that five bass, one snakehead? I think so. All right, good job, dude. Good stuff. <laughs> oh my god, we doubled up! Dude, what the heck is this? How do I... Yeah. Wait, bro. I literally... Dude, this is... Was this born this year? Holy crap. Do you think this might be this year born? Yeah, early spawn. I mean, I mean, not this year, but, you know... It's, it's been a warm winter. I don't know. How bad? How maybe it's one year old bass? Maybe yeah, I don't know how like fast late, late season bass. They probably spawn throughout the season, probably like October. November yeah, dude, spawn. look at this. Your bass could literally eat my bass. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you He's let him, is he gonna eat it for a while? What happened? It's a little, little your fish. Let him go slowly. Let's see what happens. Let him go slowly right, right here. Go. go, let him go. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Hey, baby. Whoop. Thanks for the bite. Oh no, he ate him! Oh, oh he, he got off! He got off! He got off! He, got off. Off. <laughs> he was he managed to escape. Yeah. Be a kid <laughs> That's possible. Now, I'm gonna let you go. now there does seem to be quite a healthy population of fish here, huh? All sizes. That's good. Oh. Like not only not only is the snakeheads not overpowering the bass, I feel like the fit bass fishery here is very healthy. I agree. Yeah. A good oh, good variety of sizes. The fish seem to be nice and healthy. Yeah, it seems to be plenty of bait. I'm uh, I'm feeling like the snakehead and bass are just coexisting, really. Do you have some ice? Do you have some ice with you? Oh, good. So you can def we can definitely. What happened? Bro, <laughs> do you need me to stop the boat? And you want me to keep us on autopilot? Oh, I got one. I wasn't even looking. Largey, baby. Bro, this is a largey paradise. Get in the boat. Nice. Woo! Well, my friends, I don't know. I'm gonna try catching one more fish before we try some a crazy video with uh we actually made some homemade bait. One more fish, because right now we're at seven bass, one snakehead. The bass are doing pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> They're doing pretty freaking good. Oh look at that dead carp. See that? Oh sh yeah. Ooh. Gross. How did carp even die? Like, why would he even die? I, know. I know they survive in like any water cliff types. Oh, dude, he came up and smashed it. Good bass, good bass, bro. Net, 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 net. Solid bass. Oh, yeah. Pull a little drag. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Woo good net job, bro. <laughs> Bro, oh, yeah. dude, we just saw a dead carp right there. Now we're hooking another quality three bass all day. My friends, what can we say? Three pounder, probably about tied for the biggest of the day. Mm -hmm. I bet, let's see if this one's bigger. Let's see if this one's bigger. Hold on. Whoa, okay. What are we looking at here? Oh, you're over three. I, I predicted 3.20. All right, about the same size mm -hmm. as our biggest. Not a bad morning of fishing, my friends. Only 90 minutes in the fishing. We've caught <laughs> like eight bass and one baby snakehead. <laughs> so with this, we are going to conclude the experiment. Nice fish. The Madam Woman Creek experiment. The results are the bass population is healthy. It's thriving. And there are at least a few snakeheads. I know I had some additional snakehead bites. Only landed one. But it would appear that... Snakeheads and bass can definitely coexist in harmony, at least at this particular body of water. Matamoan Creek, Potomac River. If you guys want to check it out, check it out. There's already a million people out here. You're going to have some pressure. There's a boat right there, but it's fertile. It's thriving. Beautiful fishery. We are going to end this video, and we're actually going to start a new video. We have each made a homemade bait. We're gonna see if uh, we can catch some fish on a bait that uh, we've made ourselves. And just to give you guys a sneak peek, 
I'm gonna hop back here, bro. Mm -hmm. Give the boys a sneak peek right here. Uh, we've got, here's my homemade bait right here. What do you think, Zarlite? You think I can catch one on this?